Hello, I'm Ben. And I'm Marissa. This is news that you need to know. Recently, there has been a shortage of Christmas trees in Tampa. Casey Alba reports. Each year, families in Largo say stopping by North Star Wisconsin Christmas trees isn't just a shopping experience. We like having a real tree. I mean, her, I think um, some of her family members have discussed of getting a fake tree for the next few years because it's getting really, really expensive. But I don't know, we like having the real tree, the real smell. It's a tradition that started back in 1987. You know, we take care of families of generations. People have been coming to us. Seeing the same people every year, it's really nice. I know they normally probably won't recognize me, but they'll definitely recognize my mom because she comes every year. And I was really little when I started coming here. AJ Payne and Mary Margaret Mason picked out an eight foot tree at the farm. Get putting it on top of his car is really funny too. So <laughs> just the whole process of it, I think is really fun. And although the tent looks filled with towering green pines, it wasn't an easy journey to prepare for the holiday season. In Wisconsin, we had a severe drought. Um, in order to pass five years, there has been a, a nationwide tree, tree shortage. So it's been hard to supplement what, you know, we don't grow. Richard Salzman says the nationwide drought has killed at least 5,000 of his trees this year. Employees here at North Star Christmas Trees say some of the trees that are hardest to find are the ones that are really tall, kind of like this one. This one towers over 13 feet. The company also says wildfires out west and a driver shortage is impacting their supply. Salzman says despite the shortage, his team is picking up fresh trees every couple weeks to make sure his loyal customers get the Christmas they deserve. I'm Pinellas County reporter Casey Albert and ABC Action News. The next role for the star of Stranger Things is in another strange situation. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Millie Bobby Brown tries to escape her fate as a sacrifice to a dragon in Damsel. Netflix has announced the fantasy action adventure will debut March 8th. We have to get the facts right. We have to be guided by the history, but we're trying to give the audience an experience. Which the Saturn Awards is giving Oppenheimer director Christopher Nolan its Visionary Award. The Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films describes the honor as a testament to Nolan's exceptional contributions to the world of cinema. Emily Blunt, who's nominated for a Saturn Award for Oppenheimer, will present Nolan with the honor. The 51st annual Saturn Awards are February 4th. I'd like to play a game. The Saw franchise has more deadly games in store. Following the huge success of Saw X, Lionsgate has announced the 11th film in the franchise. Yes, Saw XI. Fans can circle September 27th, 2024 on their calendars, preferably in blood red. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Tesla is recalling nearly 2 million cars to limit the use of its autopilot feature. This comes after a review of nearly 1,000 crashes in which the feature was engaged. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says the company agreed to an over-the-air software update, as well as mailing letters to owners not notifying them of the change. The update would limit the auto steer feature if a driver repeatedly fails to demonstrate they are ready to resume control of the car while the feature is on. In a recent Washington Post investigation, auto assist was used when it should not have been, in at least eight serious accidents, including some fatalities. The Times interviewed were more than 70 current and former air traffic controllers, pilots and federal officials, and reporters reviewed thousands of pages of federal safety reports and internal federal and aviation administration records. The paper says air traffic controllers and others submitted hundreds of complaints over the past two years to an FFA hotline. The complaints described issues including staffing 
Ex shortages, mental health problems and unpleasant working conditions. The Times uncovered at least seven reports of controllers sleeping when they were on duty and five complaints about employees working while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. The Times reported last August that while the U.S. airspace is remarkably safe, potentially dangerous close calls have happened and are on average several times a week this year. In other news, Customs and Border Protection is temporarily closing a port of entry in Lukeville, Arizona. Starting Monday, the crossing to and from Mexico will be closed to all pedestrian and vehicle traffic. CBP says it's due to a surge of migration and Border Patrol agents are being reassigned to process migrants at other, some point, at other points. Travelers in the area will need to use the no goals on or, or San Luis a crossing points instead. The closure is until further notice. Border, border Patrol encouraged more than 188,000 migrants at the southern border in October, which was actually a 14% drop from the 218,000 in September. And that is all the news you need to know for December 4th, 2023. Alongside the student production team, I'm Benjamin Brandle. And I'm Marissa Ryan. Have a great day, dragons.